The Lost Girl of Humanity. Complete breakdown of Ymir Fritz, her connection to Eren and episode 80 of Attack on Titan from you 2000 years ago. Ymir was the name of the enchester of all Jotnar, which is giants in Norse mythology. There's a lot of Nordic influence here. As an example, the tree she falls into, which is the path tree's references Yggdrasil, which is the world tree, and the parasite underneath is a note to the Njörgur that gnaws on Yggdrasil's roots. In fact, the substance that contains a parasite underneath the tree is likely a reference to the air. This liquid is the origin of all living things, which aligns to Kruger's words at the end of season 3. Our Inchester Ymir touched the source of all living matter. This episode revealed the origin of the Titan curse, but it focuses on the why instead of how. It tells us the story of Ymir, a girl broken by the world, and the trauma that caused her to create the cycle that has lasted for 2000 years. This works because Attack on Titan, beyond everything, is a human story. One of the most important themes is dub, Children of the Forest. Due to Arthur Brow's speech in the restaurant, he explains how cycles of hatred affect children and become self-fulfilling. Ymir fulfills this theme symbolically as she is a child in a forest when she connects to the parasite. And literally, because war is what forced her into a slavery which informed her mindset. Slavery is another important theme, as Kenny said. Everyone is a slave to something. Ymir again fully aligns due to her actual slavery, but also fulfills the symbolic side as she remained enslaved, even after she became the most powerful being in the world. This is important. She was unable to disassociate from the mentality of a slave as her trauma had left her with no self-worth or identity. To really understand why, we need to look at her story. She had her home destroyed, her tongue cut out, was forced into slavery, and then chased into the woods to be killed after three pigs were released. When she returns after gaining the power, she merely obeys instead of fighting back. This chase was the last straw, and Ymir did not grow mentally past this moment at all. We know this because she did not regenerate her tongue despite being able to do so. And then in the path, she's the same age and wearing the exact same clothes as she was that day. Ymir remains a slave because that's how she views herself. One visual example is here. She has her arm in the position of shackles, despite no actual shackles existing. This brings us to an important point, Ymir Fritz has no agency. Character agency is making decisions that affect the plot. Passive characters are put in situations outside of their control and things happen to them. This is Ymir. Ymir's trauma left her incapable of her own choices. Her lack of agency is emphasized in the structure of Attack on Titan. She is first introduced through a book as a lesson to Krista on how to behave. Next, she is used as a tool of worship that Ymir Freckles is roped into. Finally, She's used as a propaganda tool with both sides in Grisha's backstory. Even now, we only see her true past because Eren connects to her and we see it through him. Even then, she doesn't have a voice to narrate it. This also serves as a social commentary regarding how victims of abuse often feel as if they have no voice to tell their stories. However, the previous stories help to piece together the voiceless flashback. 
Krista was a role played by Historia, a girl who also had no agency and did what others wanted in order to be loved. Ymir also wanted love or connection, and that's shown on a couple of occasions. Then, through the other Ymir, we can see how the act of playing this role was something that felt good. Due to her horrifying childhood, the small luxuries such as roof, safety, and a purpose suddenly mean the world, and they reinforce her behavioral patterns. Then we come to the spear. She protects the king without having to be ordered to. The first time we see this, looking up at his cold reaction, opposed to fear and love of her daughters, makes her lose the will to live and so she stops regenerating. However, she still can't fully detach herself. So despite her agony, she creates a parallel world where she can continue to follow his orders and create his world. This is Path. The representation of conflicting emotions from a girl who couldn't fully leave behind the world that scarred her. Enter Aaron. He is the first one in 2,000 years to look at Ymir as a human instead of a tool. And this is due to one thing, he understands her. The major difference between Aaron and Ymir is that he has agency while she doesn't, but he still connects to a shared feeling of loneliness. Aaron's future memory left him alone and pushed him into a solitary path that left his friends behind. This was his choice, but he still suffers from that and can connect to Ymir who feels the same emotions of loneliness without the tools to choose for herself. Aaron gives her a choice, stay in path for eternity or destroy this world. The world of King Fritz Titan which had trapped Ymir and the world in a cycle of hatred for so long. However, it's important that while Aaron gives her a choice, he doesn't solve any underlying issues for her. She is still following someone's will. All that is changed is that she is able to choose who to follow. Her eyes are open, showing her reignited desire for freedom. But she's still a child. She hasn't grown past her trauma at all. The rumbling is a release, a cry of pain and anger. But just like genocide isn't an answer for anything, it's not the solution to a child's trauma. This is when we see a very cool detail. When Aaron sees someone's memory, he experiences them and also the emotions of the holder fully. But this connection works both ways. Just like Grisha's crazed expression and rage that led him to stab his hand was partly influenced by Aaron's emotions being a part of his experience, the same is happening here. Ymir's tears are the tears Aaron can shed, the honest anguish, pain, and loneliness that has been building up for over four years. The rumbling is Aaron's choice, but it's a choice that breaks him because no matter how ruthless he may have become, he is still the person he has always been, a person who wanted to save lives along with killing the titans, the boy who wanted to stop others from experiencing what he had is now inflicting that same thing upon countless others. All of these emotions, the self-loathing and pain are felt through Ymir in her decision to follow him. Two souls still wandering in that deep mist. And that's it for Ymir Fritz character analysis. Full credit for Caxtus Shash for posting the whole thread, the whole informative thread. I'll be linking down their channel, their Twitter account in the description of today's video. The whole thing that I've read in this video was made, was posted, was fully written by this person that is called Cactus Shash. And that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I've been working for this video for a few days now, so I really hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.